Internationally recognized for teaching and preaching the uncompromised Word of God, Bishop Clarence E. McClendon answers the prophetic and apostolic call upon his life by ministering the healing grace and miracle anointing of Jesus Christ around the world. By his preaching and teaching the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ, Bishop McClendon the teacher, the preacher, the apostle, and an anointed prophet sent to the nations, being used by the power of the Holy Spirit, has led to the healing and deliverance of millions around the world during his healing crusades and conferences. If you want to experience another level of worship, witness the healing power of Jesus, learn the uncompromised Word of God, confirmed by notable miracles, then we invite you to partake in the overwhelming power of the Holy Spirit by the moving of God's transforming grace. If you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you need to read them. You need to know who Jesus is. You need to know who Jesus was. You need to know the veracity of the things that he did that proved to the Jewish nation that he was the Messiah. But you must understand, once you have read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you have not read the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't know it yet. Even if you know everything he did, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you don't know the gospel yet. Still here? Jesus of Nazareth did not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Just, just look what he, he, he began preaching. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. At hand. At hand. Not fully here. At hand. He picked up John's message. John was preaching the... John was preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And when Jesus picks up the baton from John's ministry, he starts preaching John's message. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if you understand this, oh, lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Say, get this, get this. If you understand this, now you will understand why Jesus, when he spoke of John, said, of men born of woman, there has not risen a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Why is John the Baptist the greatest prophet? Prophet, you mean greater than Elijah, Jesus? Yeah. Greater than Isaiah, Jesus? Yeah. Greater. John the Baptist? Why? Because John the Baptist is the prophet who has the responsibility of bridging the covenants. He is the prophet who has the responsibility of helping finish the old and helping introduce the one who will introduce the new. That's why he's the greatest because he's got one foot in the old and one foot in the new and he's bridging the gap for a Messiah. Oh, I wish I had time to preach this. And this is why, this is why John, this is why John, who identified Jesus as the Messiah, who testified himself, I never saw him with my eyes, but, but he who baptized me said, he that you come seeing uh, the, on the Holy Spirit descending, he it is who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. He said, I never saw him, I just heard he was coming. And identified him. And in the spirit, he has the, identity, he has the ability to identify him. But when Jesus starts doing his ministry, he jams John up. No, you, you're, not, you're not listening to me. And John has the same dilemma that most modern Christians have. Because we're in between covenants. We don't know which one to actually live in. Because John has identified Jesus as the Messiah, told everybody he is. As a matter of fact, he told his disciples, stop following me and follow him. I must decrease, he must increase, shandai, rundai. But then John gets put in prison. He gets out of the move. And they come to John in prison and they tell him what Jesus is doing. And John says, wait, wait, what? 
Uh, go ask him, is he the one? <laughs> now, this is a guy who had declared that Jesus is the Messiah. Because Jesus did something that just, you have to remember, John was preaching Old Covenant. He was an Old Covenant prophet. He was preaching, repent, be baptized, confess your sins. He was preaching the soul that sins, it shall die. He was preaching the adulterer must be stoned. And then he gets, he, gets, he, gets, he gets word while in prison that the Pharisees brought a woman caught in the act of adultery to Jesus. And they said, Moses said she should be killed, but what do you say? And the Bible says Jesus got down in the ground and started writing and let her go. And when John's disciples came to him and said, you will never guess what we saw him do today. What did he do? We, he, we, we had an adulterer. He, they brought an adulteress to him and he let her go. And John's like, what? What? I have based my whole ministry on this guy. This is why a lot of people don't want to preach the totality of the new covenant because their whole ministry has been built on the mixture. I don't have time to go there. I don't have time to go there. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. See, you can build a church on getting people angry at sin and getting them angry at this and getting them mad about that. You can build a whole church on that and not understand you're in the wrong covenant. I don't know why I'm doing this. I got so much more to preach, but I need you to hear it. Jesus corrected his own disciples when he went into a place and they would not receive Jesus. And they said, do you want us to call down fire from heaven? And he looked at them and said, wrong covenant. You're trying to be like Elijah. You don't know what spirit you're of. You're not an old covenant prophet. You're a new covenant prophet. You're not to call down fire to kill people. I need you to sit down. You don't know what covenant you're in. You don't know what spirit you're of. I need to go a little deeper, okay? So, so can, can we... Can we, Arabo, lay your hand on your brother? Lay your hand on your sister. Tell him he's almost done yelling at you. Excuse me. Excuse me. So Jesus preaches the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus preaches the blessing, the anointing, and then he finishes the work of the old covenant at Calvary. Are you with me? He preaches the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He preaches the spirit of the Lord is upon me, Isaiah 61. He preaches the blessing. This is his ministry. But he did not preach the finished work of Jesus because the work wasn't finished until he went to the cross he was resurrected, ascended, and seated. Now, nah. so he can't preach it because it's not done. And whenever anybody had the spiritual aptitude to look into it and see it, he let them in to the other side because he couldn't keep them out. Because he wanted everybody in, but he couldn't preach it. This is what he meant when he said, from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been permitting violence. The word literally means to seize. I've been allowing people to take hold of what isn't true yet. <laughs> In the physical material realm, I have been allowing anybody who can see it to have it before it's finished. Wow. 
1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. My man, my, my master, I love you, Jesus. Would you lay your hand on your brother? Would you lay your hand on your sister and tell them something supernatural is happening on the inside of you right now? No, no, no. I need you to look at them. Don't look at me. Look at them and say something supernatural is happening on the inside of you right now. And it is going to manifest in every area of your life. Yeah, you can shout about that if, they, if you got that. If you got that, shout about it now. We have gotten the revelation that he died for all. And he died for all that those of us who believe on him should stop living from ourselves. But start living from him. From who he is. See, I'm not living from my ability. I'm living from him. I'm not living from my performance. I'm living from his righteousness. to understand this about you you new creation you you look like them but you're not like them you're in the likeness of man but you are not just a man anymore if any man be in Christ he is a First Corinthians 15. Are you still in the building? First Corinthians 15. Are you still here? So here's what I want you to see. It is Paul, the apostle, who articulates the tenets of the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the finished work of of Jesus. First Corinthians 15 verse 1. I'm going to read through verse 5. If you could put it up on the screen, it'll help me. He says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Here it is. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. I'm going all the way to verse 5. Stay with me. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach to you. In other words, what I preach to you, you got to keep it if you want this salvation to continue to work in every area of your life. If, if you keep in memory what I preach to you, unless you have believed in vain. Stay with me. Go on. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. There's number one. That he died. Number two, that he was buried. That's number two. Number three, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now that's where we stop. He got up. <laughs> yeah. And that he was raised. Here's the fourth piece. And that he was seen. Ah, of Cephas and the church. So not only did he die, not only was he buried, not only was he resurrected, he was seen. He died, he was buried, he rose again, and he was seen. Meaning, there was a revelation of him after his death. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. There was a revelation of him after his death. Now, I do not have time to go through the entirety of 1 Corinthians 15. But if, oh, okay, I'll do it. Go down to verse number 35. The Holy Ghost said, do it. While I got your spirit over, go down to verse 35. And if you can follow me all the way to verse 46, I may not get all the way. Now, watch this. 
You go down to 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 35. But some will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? And with what body do they come? Stay with me. 36. Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive until it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow the body that shall be. Watch it. When you sow it, you don't sow the body that shall be. But mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases. And to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another fish of, of birds. There are also celestial bodies, bodies of heaven, and terrestrial bodies, bodies of earth. He's not talking about just sun, moon, and stars. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection from the... He just said... I'm not talking to you about grain. I'm not talking to you about stars. I'm talking to you about the resurrection. It is sown one way, but it is raised another way. So the body that was sown and the body that was raised was not the same body. Same Jesus, different body. You're not listening to me. All, so also is resurrection. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural and a spiritual body. He just told you that the Jesus that went into the grave is the same Jesus, but the body that came out. Is a different body. It is different in glory. It's different in glory. What kept the previous body alive was blood. There was no blood in the resurrected body. He said, touch me. A spirit has not flesh and bone. No blood. The blood, the life of the flesh was no longer the blood. The life of the flesh is now the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was keeping him alive, not blood. And I got news for you. The Holy Spirit is what's keeping you alive, not your blood. I need now to take you to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 so I can show you the gospel. Because he was seen. And what was seen after the resurrection was different than what was seen before. It differed in glory. Have you ever wondered, have you ever wondered why the apostles who is given the greatest revelation of the finished work of Jesus Christ is the only one who never saw him in the flesh. Have you ever wondered why the greatest revelation of who Jesus is is not committed to Matthew, to Mark, to Luke, or to John, to James, the brother of Jesus. It is, it is committed to one, Paul, who never saw him in the flesh, but was able to look past flesh and receive revelation of the Spirit of God as to what the finished work. That's something you can search into. I don't have time to go into it, but there's something there. There's something there. There's a reason why. Because those who saw him in the natural were too mesmerized by what they saw. And God needed fresh canvas to paint the finished work of Jesus on. And he used Paul. Are you in the building with me? Or have you left me? So it is Paul who articulates this. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm almost done. Not really, but I'm almost ready to quit. Because <laughs> when you get into this, you don't get done. You just have to leave. 
It's, it, it's, it's, never, it's never finished. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. Whew. Oh my goodness. I, 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 I'm going to start at verse 13 because I am beside myself. And verse 13 says, for if we are beside ourselves, uh, it is for God or if we have a sound mind, it is you. In other words, he said, if we sound crazy, uh, it, it's for God because we can't help but tell you these things that God is showing us. But if we are sound mind, in other words, if what we're saying makes sense to you, then good. It's for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. If one died for all, then all died. This is, how, this is what we have determined. That if Jesus of Nazareth died for all of us, then all died. I need you to hear me and hear me very clearly. It is registered in heaven that you have already died with whatever the devil is telling you is trying to kill you you didn't hear what I just said it is registered in heaven that you have already died I'm going to show it to you in the Bible it is registered that you died see you don't, you don't believe me because I'm preaching the gospel to you I got to read watch this and he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. Horrible translation of the Greek word. It's not for themselves. The actual Greek word here is the Greek word hiatu, which doesn't mean for themselves. It means from themselves. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. Please pay attention. And if he died for all, he died for all, that those who live should no longer live. Watch this. Not for themselves, but from themselves. That those who died should no longer live from themselves, but from him who died for them and rose again. Watch this. In other words, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> we have judged, we have gotten the revelation that he died for all. And he died for all that those of us who believe on him should stop living from ourselves, but start living from him, from who he is. See, I'm not living from my ability. I'm living from him. I'm not living from my performance. I'm living from his righteousness. Lay, lay, lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell him we're almost there. Now watch this. Watch. Now this is about to make sense to you. Watch. Watch. And since we have settled this, since we have seen this, Look at this. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. We are not looking to anybody according to their flesh. We're not looking at anybody's flesh to determine who they are or what they have. Because we have now understood that everybody who has believed on him is living from him. Which means whatever is true about him is true about them. So we are no longer judging anybody according to the flesh. Because if you belong to Christ, whatever is true about him is true about you. As he is, so are we in, not in glory. Let Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Look at your neighbor and say, this is about to blow up in your spirit. It's about to. Look at this. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ. Notice Christ. Notice Christ. Notice Christ. Even though we have known Christ. Not Jesus. Christ. The anointed one. The anointing. Jesus was the name given to the body that was given to the anointed one but Jesus didn't come to show you Jesus he came to show you the father he just told you we got to know the father in the body of Jesus if you can never understand that Jesus did not come to show you Jesus he came to show you the father so that when you saw the Father without the flesh, you could recognize him. 
No, you didn't get what I just said. I'm going to try it over here. Jesus came to show you the Father so that when the Father showed up without the flesh, you would be able to know that's God. Because if it's the Father, it will look like Jesus, walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus. That's why he said, I'm leaving, but I'm going to give you another comforter, one just like me in every detail, but different from me, the Holy Spirit. Watch it. Even though we have gotten to know the anointing, in the body of Jesus yet now we don't know him that way any longer in other words now if we're going to continue knowing him we're going to have to continue knowing him not just by looking at Jesus but by hearing the Holy Spirit who is Jesus in his unlimited form in the now, in the now, for you, who is Jesus in his unlimited form, in the now, for you, I'm almost finished. You need to understand this about you, you new creation, you. You look like them, but you're not like them. You're in the likeness of man, but you are not just a man anymore. If any man be in Christ, he is a... what it means when it says all things are passed away not just talking about your sins not just talking about your proclivities it's talking about how you get things done how you accomplish things how you get well the doctor is not how you get well you new creation you don't get me wrong Go to doctors, let the doctor help you. If you need medication, take it. But listen to me. Doctors will tell you they can't heal. See, I, they can help your body begin to amend itself to the best of its ability. They can stop the progress of disease to the best of their ability. But my Bible says, Romans 8 31, if the spirit of him that raised up Christ Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will give life to your mortal body through his 